Kaiser and welcome to QTech. I'm making this video series to teach people how to use show automation software and take control of your show, whether you're a theater technician, a performer, uh, someone that owns a venue and is trying to simplify their tech. Today, you know, people are running a separate lighting board, uh, a sound system, video projectors, all this stuff independently of each other where they can't really talk to each other and mostly the timing that you're trying to do is triggered from a sound cue or from a light cue and unifying all this into one simple system is the way to make everybody's job easier and make the show run smoother and more convenient for everybody involved. Um, obviously you still need a great lighting designer and a sound designer to really pop your venue and give it its best uh, abilities and showcase your talent but uh, unifying these and getting the different groups to work together uh, makes it just a, such a better show. So I hope you enjoy the series and let's get started. Today we're going to talk about QLab. QLab is the hub of all my show control uh, activities. I use this really to coordinate all the other programs that I use to have QLab be the basis where all that information comes from. Um, QLab lets you do virtually everything you can imagine. Video, audio, um, animation, uh, crossfades, um, lighting, MIDI show control, MIDI in, MIDI out, Apple scripts. Uh, it's really an unlimited place to unify everything you're trying to do. Uh, many Broadway ho theater houses use uh, QLab as their main uh, system. A lot of times you'll be running two uh, next to each other in case you have trouble with one or the other. I have found the new version of QLab 3 uh, to be extremely stable. Um, I do have a backup system running, but uh, it has been an absolutely amazing piece of software to work with. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is get a copy of QLab. To do that, just jump online and go to figure53.com. You can also just Google QLab and figure53.com and go to the QLab button. Uh, by the way, do they have, do have excellent videos here as well to kind of give you an overview of what's going on. Uh, we're going to really take you through the basics here to really help you uh, get going quickly. So you just hit download. and You can download a copy of QLab and uh, gives you the option of one or uh, QLab 3 or QLab 2. We're going to use QLab QLab 3. Hit download and it's going to grab a copy of that. It'll end up in your downloads folder and once that happens you're going to just uh, install that into your applications folder and actually I think it comes in so nice you can just um, drop it right in there as, a, as an application sure enough yep there it is ready to go just drop that into your applications folder and uh, you should be ready to go. I already have a copy of that, so I'm not going to, to do that today. And uh, you can close your web browser and open up QLab. When it first opens, it'll by default open up a brand new workspace for you. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can see more by dragging the lower corner there. And this is called a workspace. You have a go button. Um, various windows to show you information. This is the notes window here. You can flag or unflag cues. This tells you what's kind of on deck. And then you have all the different cue pops possibilities that you can put in here. You have an audio cue, a mic cue, a video cue, a camera cue, a fade cue, which lets you adjust all kinds of different components, not only of audio, but many other things as well. Um, OSC, which is used for talking to other devices and between applications. Um, MIDI, also a very powerful way of talking between applications, moving information around, not just music, but uh, lots of other things, as you'll see later. Um, a MIDI file, which is really a way of playing music through MIDI. Um, it's kind of like an audio file, but it's really just accessing Apple's built-in MIDI information. Timecode is for talking to different kinds of... Uh, lighting boards and sound boards to kind of cue and trigger things based on time. A group cue is like a folder, holds uh, various groups of things. You can group them together and helps you kind of organize and keeps things um, clean and easy to kind of figure out where things live. 
You can also trigger group cues in various ways, and again, we'll get into that in uh, future videos. The start cue starts stuff. The stop cue stops stuff. Pause cue pauses. Uh, the load cue kind of preloads uh, cues for you. By default, this is already on. Um, there's ways to turn it on and off. Again, we'll cover that later. Um, reset resets various cues. Some sequences will change as they move along, and you'll want the reset to set them back to their defaults. Um, devamp stops a loop, audio loop. Um, may stop a video loop as well. Uh, go to takes you to a certain part in your cue list and uh, sets the playhead there. Target cue sets the target for a file, what's going to play. Arming and disarm are ways of turning on and off cues depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, the wait cue tells you to wait, and the memo cue just leaves some notes, and then last but not least, one of my favorites is a script cue, which lets you access Apple's powerful Apple Script format, which you may not think it's very useful, but when you get into it, it is a game changer um, for QLab, and letting QLab access the world outside of, of QLab itself. Um, I love Apple Script cues, and I will do a large section on that when the time comes. So, uh, down below here, this gives you the information about the various cues we're going to throw into place. Um, you have an edit mode and a show mode. Uh, an edit mode is where you build your show when you're ready to run it so that you don't accidentally add a cue or move something around. Show mode will um, switch to that, removes this extra information box here, makes the note section larger, makes the go button bigger, and just makes it sort of a protected environment so that it can't be, you can't accidentally trigger stuff. <coughs> Over here, this button reveals some hidden information. You have a start, another a play button, a rewind, a pause, a stop button, all to sort of control uh, this environment as well. Um, it's sort of a supplemental go button too, but it does a lot of different things. It has two options, two tabs. Cue list, which is your current cue list, main cue list. You can add extra cue lists through the add new list. You can just get rid of them, delete them, turn them on and off. And then the active cues, which is what I leave open when I'm in the middle of a show, um, shows you actually what's playing at the moment. And uh, very helpful to sort of turn on and off and see what's firing and sort of troubleshoot um, during a show live or when you're trying to work on, on your main show, building it as well. So get out of edit mode. We'll be back into edit mode here, and we'll have a quick look at the preferences file. The preferences is really what you're going to want to set up your main show with. Lots of options in here. Um, again, I really recommend figure53.com, amazing uh, support under their doc section, which will explain a lot more of this stuff in more detail, too. Um, you can tell your workspace to open a workspace on a certain queue number, which is nice if for some reason um, maybe it might crash, or every time you start up, you kind of know exactly what you want to do. It'll just fire it up and start right where you need it to start from. I start it with a small Apple script queue that has a say command which tells me that QLab is now open and ready to go. Um, that way if I have a problem I'll know that it is up and running again and ready to fire. A min minimum time required between each go. Uh, I leave this at a default of zero but um, lots of reasons you might want to change that as well. Also require a key up before rearming go. Uh, you know, if you're doing certain certain situations, there might be a, a place where that might really help you. Uh, auto number cues with a code of one. Cue numbers are automatically added when you add cues in. Um, I delete them sometimes because I don't even want to know what cue number I'm on unless it's something that I need to um, address with a script or uh, if I'm sharing a file between other people as well. Uh, enable auto load for new cues. Um, I like to leave that checked. Um, it's nice to have stuff auto load, kind of keeps it ready, and especially for large video files and uh, audio. Here we have lock playback position to selection. I like to uncheck this because um, I do like to have the ability to make changes sort of live during the show if I'm not in show mode, or I can go over and uncheck show mode. And if something happens last minute, right before the show starts, I can go ahead and tweak and work on something without affecting the playback position of what's currently running in the show. So it is helpful for last minute adjustments. 
Um, and so for this tutorials, I will be leaving this unchecked so I can go in there and mess with stuff while it's happening. Uh, the panic duration, 1.5 seconds. Panic is basically the escape key. And that will kill everything that's happening. Uh, this new version of QLab is fantastic because it, it lets you, it fades stuff out instead of this abrupt nuke that used to happen. So it kind of is nice to slowly take things down. And display size, small, medium, and large, just changes how big the text looks like uh, on the other side. Key map just gives you key uh, shortcuts to um, all of these different items. Uh, again, if you're doing a lot of triggering using your keyboard, you might want to either delete these or put something else in there in place of that. Um, lots of options here. We'll talk more about that later as well. OSC, uh, there was an OSC queue in, as an option in QLab, and this lets you set up um, different ways of getting that information in and out. You'll notice that QLab, it says there, listens on port 5300 and responds to 535001. Um, um, and that's going to be important when you're trying to set up other devices to talk to that as well. And we'll cover that when we do the OSC section of, of this podcast, videocast. MIDI controls, I leave this at the default as well, even though I do a lot of uh, MIDI show control. <clears throat> But um, pretty much, this is just an easy way to get in and make settings, different settings for um, triggering and firing different things. You can have MIDI, a MIDI keyboard, or any kind of MIDI uh, iPhone device, or uh, anything trigger uh, everything you need in QLab remotely. Audio. Uh, you have the ability to patch audio from the different, out, different uh, outputs. Um, the default built-in uh, output is what comes up normally right off the bat. Um, I have Soundflower uh, installed. It's a way, another way of sort of adding outputs to your device. I have it go out through um, a wireless device. Um, I, for some reason, you cannot um, get rid of these once they're in there. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but hopefully in a future update, they'll have that option of having either nothing there uh, as well. By default, they do just show up. I'm just going to make them be no device right now because I don't intend to use those. Um, you can edit these patches as well, um, which is kind of nice because you can add special effects to certain places. And, uh, and then the matrix mixer here is how you patch all your devices. You can have a lot of, uh, a lot of devices, 48 channels right off the bat uh, with the pro audio license. The mic setup lets you have mic inputs. Um, my, I bring my mic inputs in through, um, through an Apogee Duet via Firewire and when that is plugged in it'll show up here as one of the options. Um, again you can edit those patches, have special effects on them. At that point you can also have them go right through a mic queue itself. You can set default levels for those as well. Um, the video section is pretty powerful and we'll be covering this again separately. This is where you see various item by various screens that are connected to your computer um, and you can adjust these in many different ways um, by editing um, how their, uh, their their dimensions and size and uh, lots and lots of options here. Um, I have a projector setting when I um, use a certain projector so I can kind of use it go in and adjust that and it'll adjust it for all the cues that reference that same that same uh, surface. Camera cue is how you want to bring in video into your into into your QLab files. I have a wireless Bluetooth cam hooked up. Um, I also have a uh, the built-in Mac iSight camera, and then I have a HD uh, USB camera right now plugged in. And so you can assign these. You can keep going. You can have up to eight different cameras hooked up. Uh, very very cool way of uh, for doing live stuff and uh, recording stuff. All kinds of different interesting options there. Fade cue, uh, very powerful, works on lots of different different cues, and uh, you can adjust the curve here and do a bunch of other options as well. And OSC has its own section. This is where you patch your OSC devices in here, and we'll cover that in a later section. MIDI, also how you're going to patch and tell where these different where your MIDI is going to be going and and uh, coming from and and that kind of thing. The IAC driver is the main built-in Mac um, MIDI 
and you'll need to set that up by using uh, one of the utilities in your applications folder. We'll cover that when we do the MIDI section. Uh, I also have a um, network session, which is a wireless MIDI set up again through the same uh, Mac, I think it's called Audio MIDI Setup Utility. Let you get in there and set all this stuff up. Gives you lots of ways to get information out and into your machine. Uh, MIDI files, again, uh, how they're going to be patched. Uh, pretty basic stuff. You can kind of, these different MIDI devices will show up in here and how you're going to send them, whichever ones are turned on. When you first start QLab, you probably won't have any in there until you create them later. Time code. Uh, you know, pretty advanced, really, for controlling different external devices. Um, I will not be covering timecode. I do not use timecode, haven't used it. Um, maybe someone could uh, make a video for it. That would be great. Group cues, um, just sort of setting the default on how group cues are fired when it, when it enters that group. Um, just for now, let's just leave uh, start first child and enter into group as the default. These others, um, have lots of cool uses, um, especially the start random child and go to next queue. This kind of interesting way of kind of doing random uh, light cues or sound files or all kinds of interesting um, to toys. Uh, wait time, the default wait time, you can just set that to whatever you want it to be. And the script queue, you know, the one thing you might want to add here is maybe if, if you're going to be sharing this file with other people, it would be a, just a comment, just put in a dash and uh, just say, you know, whoever whoever is making these these scripts and stuff to um, you know give them credit for what what the work they put into it and uh, anyway that'll kind of just always have that in there when you start each each um, new Apple script that you use each script and queue. hit done and uh, then you got the whole shenanigans ready and kind of queued up ready to go um, and then you can start making cues and um, building your show so we'll cover that in the next podcast